Fast food has been a major part of American life, holding a special spot in the hearts of many, and it's been heavily exported to the rest of the world too. Take for instance McDonald's, with more than 39,000 locations in about 100 different countries. McDonald's not only dominates the industry, but the company has seen many competitors come and go over the past several decades. However, many of these restaurant chains you love are on the brink of filing for bankruptcy. Some even end up meeting a surprising or tragic ending, no matter their size. From iconic pancake chains to famous entertainment venues, these are some of the beloved restaurant chains we might lose in 2024. 1. Soup Plantation Sweet Tomatoes These buffet restaurants, known as Soup Plantation in Southern California, Sweet Tomatoes elsewhere, were not just places to eat, they were community hubs, family favorites, and culinary havens. But then, the unthinkable happened. After the coronavirus swept through, it left a devastating blow to the restaurant. The heartbreak was palpable. All 100 or so locations shuddered during state shutdowns. And then, the final blow. The parent company, Garden Fresh Restaurants, filed for bankruptcy. Though these doors may have closed, the spirit of supplantation sweet tomatoes will live on. 2. Bravo Brio The company behind the beloved Italian restaurant chains Bravo Cucina Italiana and Brio Tuscan Grill has been facing tough challenges, with rising food costs and other issues already putting a strain on their business. And then, just when they thought things couldn't get any worse, the coronavirus pandemic hit. We've experienced nothing short of devastating sales declines. Those were the words of Food First Global Restaurant CEO Steve Late as he addressed the impact of COVID-19 on their business. Reports indicate that early in 2021, 10 of their restaurants were forced to close their doors for good, and as states implemented restrictions on dining in, an additional 71 locations were shut down, leaving just 21 still operating. Faced with mounting financial pressure, the company had no choice but to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. 3. Outback Steakhouse Just a few months after bidding farewell to two Outback Steakhouse locations in Hawaii, it looks like another spot from the popular steakhouse chain has served its last blooming onion. The Outback Steakhouse in Methuen, Massachusetts has recently closed its doors for good, as reported by local news outlet The Daily Voice. And if you head over to their Facebook page, you'll see the heartbreaking announcements that they're shutting down for good. Despite these closures, Outback is still sizzling with ambition. The chain announced back in 2022 that they're gearing up for a big expansion aiming to open 75 to 100 additional locations across the United States in the coming years. 4. Red Lobster From their famous Cheddar Bay Biscuits to endless shrimp platters, Red Lobster has been a go-to spot for seafood enthusiasts nationwide. But despite their tasty offerings, the restaurant has faced some choppy waters in recent years. Several once thriving locations have been forced to close their doors, signaling rough times ahead for the chain. In 2021 alone, Red Lobster bid farewell to five of its restaurants, and from 2022 through 2023, eight more locations were shuttered. While these closures only make up 1% of Red Lobster's total locations, there's concern that the trend could continue into 2024. But the Thai Union Group, the proud owner of Red Lobster, assures us that these closures are all part of a bigger plan. 5. Krispy Kreme Despite scoring record sales in 2022 and teaming up with the Golden Arches of McDonald's, Krispy Kreme is making some strategic moves in 2023. They announced plans to close 14 locations last year, but don't worry, it's all part of a plan to prune away low-performing stores rather than a sign of trouble brewing. In 2022, the chain bid farewell to 10 units that just weren't bringing in enough dough, <laughs> pun intended. But here's the sweet part. These closures seem to be paying off. By the end of the year, Krispy Kreme raked in a whopping $1.52 billion in net revenue. According to Krispy Kreme President and CEO Mike Tattersfield, 
we remain very confident in our long-term goal of achieving more than 50,000 points of access globally. They're even rolling out a new hub-and-spoke business model where larger locations act as donut production hubs, shipping out freshly baked goodies to smaller shops known as spokes. But what do you think awaits them for the rest of the year? 6. California Pizza Kitchen Unfortunately, California Pizza Kitchen has found itself in a tough spot. It's already filed for bankruptcy. While many fast food pizza joints have thrived with delivery services, California Pizza Kitchen's focus on sit-down dining has left it struggling to keep up. And things have not been easy. Even before the bankruptcy announcement, locations were already shutting down for good, including spots in Texas, Alabama, and Georgia. To make matters worse, the company is drowning in debt with a whopping $400 million owed, but only a fraction of that in available funds. Despite the challenges, the CEO remains optimistic, stating that California Pizza Kitchen will quickly emerge from the setback, but it won't be a cakewalk. The business also faces months of unpaid rent at many of its locations. 7. Golden Corral Unlike some restaurants that were able to adapt, Golden Corral's buffet-style service proved to be a major challenge during the pandemic. Their communal dining spaces and shared serving utensils raised concerns about hygiene and safety, forcing many locations to shut down. In fact, Golden Corral's largest franchisee, owning 33 locations in Florida and Georgia, had to file for Chapter 11 bankruptcy protection. While some locations have reopened, the road to recovery has been slow. CEO Lance Trenary acknowledges that not all franchisees will be able to continue operating without additional financial support. According to Trenary, recovery has been steady but slow. 8. Potbelly Back in May 2023, the Potbelly restaurant chain dropped a bombshell, announcing plans to permanently shutter up to 100 locations, roughly one quarter of their total company-owned restaurants. To tackle the challenge head-on, they brought in a restructuring consultant and a bankruptcy attorney to help navigate the situation. And it seems like those efforts have paid off, at least to some extent. By August, the Chicago-based chain had revised their estimates now expecting to close fewer than 50 restaurants. Now, that's quite a drop from their initial projection. However, they did confirm the closure of 16 locations, so the road to recovery is still ongoing. One major hurdle for Potbelly is its lease agreements, especially in high-rent cities where it operates many locations. Reportedly, the chain has amassed over $200 million in unpaid lease payments, adding to its financial strain. To alleviate some of this pressure, Potbelly applied for and received a $10 million payback protection program loan. However, after facing public backlash over large companies receiving PPP loans, Potbelly made the decision to return the funds. 9. Dave & Buster According to experts at S&P Global Market Intelligence, Dave & Buster's faced a 16% chance of being unable to repay its loans in 2021. If that scenario unfolds again, the chain may have to consider filing for bankruptcy, closing locations, or perhaps even both. S&P ranked Dave & Buster's as the most likely among the largest publicly traded restaurant chains to default on its loans. But there's a glimmer of hope in this situation. The odds of Dave & Buster's defaulting on its loans were over 50%. Plus, S&P believes that with many competing entertainment concepts struggling, Dave & Buster's could seize the opportunity to expand its market share. However, the road ahead still looks challenging for the food and game chain. And to add to the uncertainty, reports emerged that the company would be laying off over 1,300 workers across seven states. 10. P.F. Chang's Founded 1993 in Scottsdale, Arizona, the company was riddled with debt pre-2020. When new owners took over in 2019, the chain owed about $675 million. The popular Asian bistro restaurant chain P.F. Chang's had its credit rating downgraded, largely due to the impact of the coronavirus outbreak. But like so many others, P.F. Chang's was suffering from already weak trends 
before the pandemic. One month after the credit downgrade, the chain permanently shuttered a location in New York, laying off more than 100 people, and then in May did the same to a restaurant in Maryland. The most telling sign of P.F. Chang's troubles, however, occurred as recently as September. That's when the company announced it would be extending temporary layoffs of thousands of employees. Worse for the chain is the fact that it was unable to bring those workers back, even though it received a multi-million dollar loan from the federal government. 11. Kona Grill Back in 1998, Kona Grill burst onto the scene with its unique offerings. With 40 scratch-made sauces and global flavors infused into their stir-fry and sushi, it quickly became a standout in the dining world. However, fast forward to last year, and the chain found itself in troubled waters. Kona Grill filed for bankruptcy, closing a staggering 19 locations and sending shockwaves through the industry. Part of the problem is that the stunning Kona Grill restaurants come with a hefty price tag of around $4 million to build. According to a former CEO, the leadership's ambitious expansion plans may have been a contributing factor to the chain's downfall. As one former CEO revealed to Restaurant Business, the company's leadership may have been too eager to expand, leading to financial strain. However, when sales started to drop off in 2015, Kona panicked and cut back on culinary innovation, cut back on management and support staff and employee training. All of this had a negative impact on the guest experience. As of 2024, we hope they're not going to close totally. 12. Marie Callender You might recognize Marie Callender's name from the frozen food aisle, but did you know there was a real Marie Callender? Marie started out baking delicious dessert pies in her modest Orange County home back in the 1940s in California. By the 1950s, she was whipping up 200 pies a day for local restaurants, and soon enough her family decided to open their own restaurants to showcase Marie's culinary creations. But despite their early success, the chain faced challenges when it was owned by the Perkins Pancake Restaurants Company, which filed for bankruptcy in 2019. Today, Marie Callender's is moving forward under new ownership, but the number of locations has dwindled from over 50 to fewer than 30 in the Western U.S. But fear not, pie aficionados. Even if your local Marie Callender's is no more, you can still enjoy their delicious pies from the comfort of your own home with their frozen options. 13. Metro Diner Metro Diner first opened its doors in Jacksonville, Florida back in 1992, serving up classic comfort food with a twist. But it wasn't until 2010 when the chain was featured on the Food Network show Diners, Drive-Ins and Dives that its popularity soared to new heights. However, despite its initial success, Metro Diner has faced challenges in recent years, resulting in the closure of several locations. Both Las Vegas locations have shut their doors, along with restaurants in Indianapolis, Birmingham, South Tulsa, and Macon. One reason cited for the pullout from Las Vegas is the state's wage laws. Nevada requires employers to pay tipped workers the regular minimum wage, unlike many other states where workers who receive tips can be paid a lower base rate. Metro Diner stated that complying with this law made it difficult for the company to remain profitable in Las Vegas. 14. Gordon Biersch Brewery Restaurant Gordon Biersch, with its signature German-style lagers, has been a fixture in the American brewing scene for 30 years. But lately, the chain has been facing some challenges. Over the past year, all four Arizona locations have closed their doors, and in early 2020, Gordon Biersch bid aloha to its only restaurant in Hawaii. Now only 17 locations remain across the United States, half as many as there once was. But Gordon Biersch isn't ready to call it quits just yet. The company's very first brew pub, opened in Palo Alto, California in 1988, has undergone a transformation. It's been rebranded as Dan Gordon's and now offers a farm-to-table menu with a big focus on barbecue. 15. Benihana When the first Benihana restaurant opened its doors in 1964, 
it revolutionized the dining experience with its captivating theatricality. From the mesmerizing onion volcano to the skillful teppanyaki chefs, Benihana never fails to entertain its guests. Over the years, Benihana became synonymous with teppanyaki, introducing Americans to the art of Japanese griddle cooking. Their unique approach quickly gained popularity, but as time passed, competition in the teppanyaki industry grew fiercer. As of now, the Benihana in Sacramento, California has closed its doors. With the years still ongoing, you might hear that this beloved restaurant has totally shut down. What do you think about these restaurants? Will they disappear, or are we going to see them rebranded the new ones? We look forward to your comments, and thank you for watching.